Travel Television has commemorated the 50th anniversary of the Peace Corps with multiple stories of volunteers, its celebrations, and with winners of the Peace Corps video contest. This month, we bring you some of these stories once again. Exactly 50 years ago, history was made on these steps, and a truly remarkable story began. On a night much like this one, cool and rainy, presidential candidate Senator John F. Kennedy, standing before thousands of students, spoke about sacrifice and service. He challenged U of M students to use their education for a greater purpose. He asked them to serve this country by serving others in developing nations. No speech had been planned. His staff went to bed. Uh, he saw this amazing crowd uh, and said, of course, I, I have to say something. I want to express my thanks to you as a graduate of the Michigan of the East, Harvard University. If you hear the words he said, when you hear those words, you, you realize that it was a spirit. How many of you who are going to be doctors are willing to spend your days in Ghana, technicians or engineers? How many of you are willing to work in the foreign service and spend your lives traveling around the world? On your willingness to do that, not merely to serve one year or two years in the service, but on your willingness to contribute part of your life to this country, I think will depend the answer whether a free society can compete. I think it can, and I think Americans are willing to contribute. But the effort must be far greater than we've ever made in the past. You really have to know the times, and you have to know the context of Kennedy having been inaugurated in January, and this whole sense of new beginnings in the nation. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. There was excitement everywhere. And I think we felt a little bit like we were part of this new frontier. But the, the magic of what happened that night was that those students, those students, they caught not just the spirit, but the fact that those words could be turned into action. Unless you comprehend the nature of what is being asked of you, this country can't possibly move through the next 10 years in a period of relative strength. Kennedy sort of was intrigued with the fact that the students responded to him. And in fact, he even said after he left to go on his whistle stop tour in the state of Michigan, he said, that's a win we got a winning idea. The Peace Corps really was born because the sparks cast by John Kennedy that night, they caught and turned into a flame. And he, he used the flame to pick up the torch. Here we were just a few students at the University of Michigan who responded to a moment in history. And in less than three weeks, the future president of the United States is committing himself. The spirit that was alive here 50 years ago, it seems to be alive again. You know, it was 50 years ago that a young candidate for president came here to Michigan and delivered a speech that inspired one of the most successful service projects in American history. And so, it is only fitting in this story so full of coincidence and synchronicity that another young president who also inspired the youth in America with his campaign to once again pass the torch to a new generation and reissue a challenge. On your willingness to contribute to part of your life, to this country, I think will depend the answer whether, whether a free society, society can compete. If you are willing, as past generations were willing, to contribute part of your life to the life of this country, then I, like President Kennedy, believe we can, because I believe in you. Congratulations on your graduation, 2010. May God bless you. To those people in the Hudson village.
soldiers of half the globe struggling to break the bonds of mass misery, we pledge our best efforts to help them help themselves. If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. Happy 50th birthday, Peace Corps! Peace Corps, happy 50th birthday, yeah! Birthday Peace Corps. Happy 50th birthday, Peace Corps. Happy 50th birthday, Peace Corps. Happy 50th, Peace Corps. Happy 50th birthday, Peace Corps. Happy 50th, Peace Corps. Happy 50th birthday for the Peace Corps. Happy 50th anniversary, Peace Corps. Happy 50th birthday, Peace Corps. That I'm leaving Pitch myself cause it feels like I'm dreaming Pack my things into two bags Like how's that gonna fit into two bags Who'd have thought I'd have sold my car Quit my job, go so far Away from the place I was raised And I know half of me wants to stay But half wants to go But I know that I gotta go through With the plans that I made The goals I pursue What I wanna do is help those Who really need Push myself and succeed Not be greedy, just live a simple life and give But moving on, I'm moving on I'll miss you all, I'll soon be gone Tell my friends, friendship never ends But a few of them will never be the same with me again In my family, that I can't leave But I have to understand me Now I'm standing at the airport And I go hug those I care for Then they tell me they're always here for me No matter where I go, therefore I go and grab this old book bag Slowly turn around and I don't look back can't believe that I'm leaving Pinch myself cause it feels like I'm dreaming First you come, then you go First you didn't, now you know And at first, I complained But that was back then, now I've changed And this place, feels like home After years here, gotta go But I know that I gotta go through With the plans that I made, the goals I pursue but moving on, I'm moving on I'll miss you all, I'll soon be gone Lost a family, then I gained one Now it's back to where I came from Sing it, I'll fail Yeah Each year around the mall in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Institution sets up shop for a two-week celebration. This year, the 50th anniversary of the Peace Corps was selected for the Folk Life Festival. The Peace Corps Village provided stages for performers who wanted to pay homage to an organization that had so profoundly impacted and changed their lives. 
volunteers, and alumni boards visit each other often through the returning Peace Corps alumni group. Travel Television spoke with the exhibit curator to get insight into how the Peace Corps operates and why it has been such a life changer for both the volunteers and the residents of the communities they serve. Jim Deutsch, the Smithsonian Curator for the Peace Corps. Jim, why is it that the Peace Corps is featured in the Folklife Festival this year? Well, one reason is 2011 is the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the Peace Corps. As you know, shortly after President Kennedy was elected in November 1960, by executive order, he established the Peace Corps in March 1961. And 50 years later, we are looking at the work of the Peace Corps around the world and they help young uh, people to develop our country. It's amazing. I worked as a cross-cultural facilitator at the training course for Peace Corps volunteers, and uh, I'm, I think it's uh, it's amazing organization, Peace Corps. <laughs> And when the Peace Corps was established in 61, it was given three interrelated goals. And those goals were, one, to provide experienced volunteers overseas to countries that had requested support. And you make a little hole, and then... But still... Two, to help people in those countries better understand Americans. And the third goal is to bring it home, to help Americans better understand the people and the culture uh, where Peace Corps volunteers are serving. And that third goal of the Peace Corps is very close to the mission of the Smithsonian Institution. One of our strategic goals is to value and help our visitors better understand cultures from around the world. So it's a great kind of working relationship of Smithsonian and Peace Corps to help our visitors better understand and appreciate cultures from around the world. This is so great for me. I, I must say I'm happy to be here. She, in sharing our, cult, our, our culture with you as Garinago people from Belize. <laughs> We have brought with us roughly 90 participants from 15 countries and the U.S. to demonstrate the, the working relationship of Peace Corps volunteers with the people with whom they serve. So we have basket weavers from Kenya. We have shea butter producers from Ghana. We have organic farmers from Jamaica. And much more, all of whom are working directly with Peace Corps volunteers in their countries, making a very profound impact. So the Smithsonian Folklife Festival program gives you a kind of a small representation of work that the Peace Corps is doing around the world. It's for me a great pleasure to be on this stage. He's very honored to perform here on this scene, and he's very he, he wants to say thank you to Peace Corps that he has a chance to be here in the United States, here in the world stage of uh, Smithsonian Folklife Festival. And now his dream to be in the United States become true. I think that during its 50 years, the Peace Corps has had a profound impact on American culture. One is just the fact that there have been more than 200,000 volunteers. So most of these people have never met an American before and may never meet an American again. So the Peace Corps volunteer is promoting peace and world friendship by being in these small communities representing the United States. The Peace Corps commemorated 50 years of service at the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. Peace Corps, the ones who came to Belize, with the help of Tim O'Malley and the other guys came, did their work, and now we're here doing our thing. The Peace Corps, 200,000 plus volunteers serving in 139 countries, something all Americans can celebrate. <laughs> 
I served in Peru from 1965 to 1967 teaching English at the University, National University of Trujillo, Peru. We served in Poland from 93 to 95 and... 93 to 96. And 92 to 95. I served in Brazil 69 through 71. And I proudly served in the Dominican Republic 1987 to 1989. Okay, I served in Ukraine, particularly Lviv and Mykolaiv, Ukraine. I served in Albania from 2005 to 2007. I served in the Republic of Macedonia. I served in Zambia from 2007 to 2009. I served in Thailand in Naratiwat, southern Thailand, 1967 to 69. A great experience. Recommend it to everyone, maybe even you. That's why they're all here. The Peace Corps goals are simple provide technical assistance to desiring countries and promote mutual friendship between the United States and the world. No doubt the Peace Corps changed the world, but what about the volunteers? How has the Peace Corps changed your life? Hi, uh, it helps you to be patient. It also teaches you um, what a big world we have and how many the differences there are in the world. Um, the Peace Corps changed my life by opening my eyes and opening my mind. I have a much more um, a much stronger affinity to other cultures and other people after having served um, in Macedonia. And uh, I, I was in the Master's International Program, and so I got my master's degree and had the experience of Peace Corps together, so that was fantastic. Peace Corps Chile totally changed my life. I got very involved in Latin American affairs, I went into academics, became an economist because I was inspired by the work that the economists were doing in Chile. Then I joined the State Department, eventually the National Security Council at the White House. The Peace Corps changed my life and it gave me an appreciation that people are people wherever you go. They have the same desires, the same needs, and it doesn't matter how much money they have. It was really interesting to see how little they got by with and how little I can get by with. It opened me up to the world. I hadn't done much traveling before that, so it was a chance to see some of the world that I would probably never would have seen before and learn that people from all over the world are basically the same. Good people trying to make the best out of life. Um, Zambians are very loving, good people and, and I gained a family on the other side of the world. Meeting a guy, getting married, come, then coming back. This, this was actually my re-entry back into the United States, this festival. So I uh, probably won't know the extent to which it's changed my life for, you know, maybe another few months. But already it has been the most amazing three years of my life. Set the tone of the rest of my life and what I've wanted to do in life. The Peace Corps has made me a citizen of the world, not just a citizen of the United States. Living abroad for two years, learning the language and the culture of Peru, made me sensitive to a different way of life and able to appreciate life in ways that we need to learn in this country as well. Our country today needs the Peace Corps more than ever. Good thing the federal agency is 50 years young and going strong. So the party goes on. <laughs>I served in Malawi from 1965 to 1967 as a teacher. Well, I think it teaches you very quickly that there's a lot of things you can do out there to help people and you receive something back. You receive inspiration and motivation. That's really what happened with me. Being in the Peace Corps taught me to not waste anything. And you don't let one single bean go to waste. And so I'm a recycler. I believe that everything possible should be recycled. Nothing should be wasted. It's expanded my uh, 
horizons and my interest in uh, international work, particularly in health promotion disease prevention. The thing that most volunteers will say that uh, they have formed lifelong uh, friendships. And it just became another family for me. So I've been down there many times to see them. They've been up here to see me, so it completely changed my life. Perhaps the biggest realization for me when I went and served in, in Senegal and Haiti is that we actually in the Western world are a minority. Three quarters of the world live in poverty and struggling to develop, and we often take it for granted that we are the world. Not. <laughs> It changed my whole life. Uh, probably most significantly, I learned that I can learn foreign languages, but I used that skill and ability through 28 years of service with the UNICEF and the United Nations, learning the languages in every country I went to. I can honestly say it was the best experience of my life. <laughs> Well, you know, I really think the Peace Corps is one of the very best things that our country has ever done. We'll see you in 50 years. <laughs>
It stands for everything that America has ever stood for. I think that everyone should have a volunteer spirit. And, it, you know, as one, we're all working together to make everyone lives better and if there is a need then we're trying to try and find it. Well we're volunteering here today as part of the Peace Corps 50th anniversary celebration because I want to be of service to my community and that's uh, that's one of the goals of the Peace Corps is to come back and make a difference um, not just where we served around the world but to come back and make a difference in our communities now. We are doing a service project at Martha's Table. We do this every reunion to give to somebody else. Today I'm volunteering because I miss that experience of giving back to the community and being able to do things for other people um, besides just my family. The Peace Corps allowed me to do that for an extended period of time and I just miss that experience and so that's why I'm here today. Peace Corps impacts my life every day. Gratefulness, huge gratefulness for, for everything we have here. It stands for everything we believe in and hope to achieve in the world. My name is Doug, and this is my story. When my girlfriend and I met, she had already applied to Peace Corps. I hoped she would change her mind and stay with me in the U.S., but a year later she started her service, and I started saving for a plane ticket. After corresponding by letters for six months, we were reunited in Zambia. In spite of my reservations, and the tsetse flies, and flesh-eating ants, I found our new way of life to my liking. I lived as our fellow villagers did, in a mud and thatch hut without electricity or running water. I watched carefully as our neighbors worked the soil and raised livestock to provide food for their families. We soon planted our own garden and got our first pet together, a chicken named Fireball. The villagers showed us how to thatch a roof for our chicken coop and took us on walks through the bush to gather wild fruits and mushrooms. There are things that developing countries can learn from the U.S., but there are just as many things Americans can learn from countries like Zambia. Before my time in Zambia, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. We're now urban farmers in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, raising chickens, ducks, vegetables, fruit trees, and bees. I don't want to miss out on the most basic and satisfying act of producing my own food, of knowing where it comes from and that I helped create it. Although I was against it at the time, she joined Peace Corps anyway, hoping to change lives. And she did. Ours. And that's my piece of the core.